I've never seen a diamond in the flesh I cut my teeth on wedding rings Dude, that's pretty oh, cool. Man, that is a, I just that said is a sad clown. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty good. This is The Gloom, bringing you weekly interviews with F3 Omaha Pack, exploring their F3 experiences, and finding those sticky elements that create the glue in the gloom. All right, we'll jump right in. I uh, have a pleasure of talking with another guy today. Um, recently was a site queue at uh, the Combine, so our hardest working AO. Uh, this guy has sort of an electrifying uh, leadership uh, quality to him when I see him out there leading. I just really appreciate just the the way that he leads other men, guides them uh, through sort of F3, um, and also have appreciated just his engagement on how we can lead better some of the things that we need for our site cues and, and other leaders. So uh, kill switch, man, it's, you, you do look really good. Uh, I, I wish this was a video cast sometimes, but uh, it's good to see you, man. And um, where we like to start is just uh, who EH'd you, how'd you get started? What was the first workout like? Uh, any memories from that? And then tell us about the name uh, kill switch. Well, uh, thank you for, uh, for interviewing me today. Um, Long time, first time. Um, so my uh, EHing process actually started before F3. Uh, my neighbor um, for a long time was LPC. And I think we lived next door to each other for about a year before really introducing ourselves. And then started talking and pretty soon we're hanging out on the, on the back porch every night. Um, I want to say maybe a year before the F3 EH. He actually EH'd me into playing in a hockey league. Oh, nice. Um, I hadn't played hockey ever. <laughs> okay. So I went out and, uh, you know, I think we were probably about eight beers deep, and he uh, said, hey, you should play hockey. And I said, okay. <laughs> and, uh, a couple months later, I was in a hockey league and falling so much that the referee had to tell me how to skate. He said, you know, you just hold your hands in front of you. You won't fall backwards. So pretty sure I cracked my rib cage during that process. But Anyway, so um, so my uh, career was kind of shifting at the time, and um, LPC uh, said you should really join this group. It's you know I've I've known you for a while, and I think you gain a lot from it. And again, I think we were on the porch late one night, and I said, okay. So we set the date, and I ended up my first post was at the berm, and uh, I don't know if you remember Nightcrawler. Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, so he was queuing that day, and we did murder bunnies up and down a hill. Oh man! And I honestly think I blacked out for part of it. Um, I had tunnel vision, uh, running back to the flags, and they were asking me questions. I don't really remember the whole interview process, but uh, it came out that my my schooling was in electrical engineering. So then, kill switch got brought up, and. Um, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. You should have told the hockey story. We, we kind of come up with all sorts of hockey names, right? You could you could be yeah, Gretzky have, right now. <laughs> I couldn't think at all at that point. I was I could barely see. <laughs> yeah, well, so hockey's no joke, right? That's a tough sport. I mean, how where were you at fitness wise before you came out to F three? Then, uh, somewhere between uh, terrible and. Not as terrible. Uh, hockey is great because you you you're effectively sprinting for thirty to forty five seconds, and then you're on the bench. Yeah, and you're on the bench for two or three minutes, you can kind of recover. And at the time, I was thinking this is the hardest thing anybody does ever. But yeah. I'm, I was skating about a third of the fast, a third as fast as everybody else on the rink. And uh, anyway, it was it was great, but. Um, like everybody else, I'm like, oh, I need to get in better shape before I can come to F3. So yeah. I had started, uh, quote unquote, running around our neighborhood in this track that my wife kind of laid out. Um, it's like a 5K. It would take me 45 minutes or so <laughs> yeah. uh, to do a 5K, which is a silly time at this point now that I'm thinking about it. But um, so, yeah, I tried to get into shape before going to F3 and then showed up the first day and I was like, just completely blown out. And then I think it took me a week to come back. 
where we ran up the hill from the lake up back up to Stone Creek Park. We ran up and down that hill on the road. And I said, this is still terrible. Mm -hmm. And I complained a lot then and I still complain a lot now. So yeah, that's all right. Though. Do you feel like you, well, first of all, are you still doing hockey? Are you, or do you, you stop that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I did, we did the first season. It was hilarious. Cause it was like, uh, it's a great league, honestly. It's the home, I think, home finder league. It's a bunch of, it was real estate agents that put it together originally. Okay. Um, or hockey finder is what it started by home finder people, but it's called hockey finder. Okay. And the league was like their lowest echelon league. And there was only two teams in the league. So we just played each other every week. Oh, nice. Okay. So that lasted one season and a second season. And then I don't think they had it the third one. And I, I haven't skated really since so. okay too many injuries probably right no yeah i yeah yeah where so so you mentioned that you're so is your wife a, a runner or is, is she, what's what's her workout exercise regimen so she's actually uh pretty involved in fia she's a, a site cue for fia so nice. um i think it's called triple crown on saturdays down at uh i always forget the name of that park down by baxter it's the same site as um well, Stinson, and, Stinson yeah, Park. Stinson, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Nice. Do you so do you feel like you you've grown then in your fitness journey? Do you feel more fit now? I guess how I do you know your 5K time these days? Uh my 5K time is close, it's right at a half an hour right now. I haven't really done a 5K in a while. Um for a time, I should say. Yeah. I'm always super banged up when I'm when I'm doing it, uh, originally, so my whole, my goal when I first started was I want to post three times a week. And then, um, I started adding in a fourth and then a fifth. And then, um, my first pre-run, I remember that was with, uh, with pantyhose and Escobar <laughs> at uh, the helix and they really sandbagged it for me, which I totally appreciate. Um, but then, you know, as you go on with, with this group, it's like, the beat down is one thing, but then you want to connect with somebody. So then you end up pre-running. And then I started pre-running and then pre-rucking, um, which the pre-rucks are fantastic. You can really have a pretty deep conversation with somebody on that. Yeah. And then uh, now I'm doing the Murph challenge currently. So uh, that's been a lot of pre-Murphs. I did the one in January as well. So it's yeah. it's my fitness is very much accelerated how's how's your sleep life <laughs> Are you getting, okay. that's where i struggle i don't get enough sleep because of all the pre-stuff right to get there by 4 30 sometimes is a yeah our, the uh, goal is to get in bed by 10 o'clock and okay. we we make it most of the time i would say nice but uh yeah it seems like saturday i get to a point and hit a wall and then take about a 45 minute nap and then i'm good yeah. Yeah. I always get scolded if, you know, if I fall asleep early and sometimes I'll fall asleep when I put the kids to bed at like eight, you know, and that's a, then I'm, then I'm not supposed to post the next, next day. Right. It's sort of the, the dilemma, but well, man, it sounds like, um, even though maybe you didn't like enjoy it or it was maybe painful, you just kept increasing your, uh, sort of posting, right. It's that, that's what it sounds like, I guess. Yeah. It's, it, Honestly, it, it, without the the coffee and the the other guys, it, I mean, that's like the, the podcast. That's the glue that holds us together. Wow. Um, you just get encouragement from guys, and you get a text, and it's like, "Hey, I'm going to pre run tomorrow. You want to go?" And I'm not going to tell that guy no. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm going to show up every time. So how did you start? I mean, you mentioned coffee and, and pre-running, pre-rucking. Um, I mean, how did you start getting involved in those things, just sort of observing and then showing up? Or what was your approach there? Yeah, you got you got guys like like Doppler. And um, honestly, I started, a, I didn't start it. It just came about, uh, nailed it. And Doppler and um, Frosty and I kind of live in the same neighborhood. So we started running together on every other Sunday, whatever Sunday, the rabbit hole wasn't, we were running on that Sunday. Okay. So that kind of, that was one thing that kind of got me more into running. I wanted to be better at that. I wanted to be able to keep up better at that. So then during the week, you are running and, uh, yeah. So between that, signed, signed up for a couple 10 Ks 
like the leprechaun chase we did last year. And then this year I did, I signed up for the the whole Bryn running series to kind of keep me motivated. Um, you know, you see the guys doing the the half marathons every month with the halfway house. And um, I kind of made a personal goal that I wanted to do a 10 K every month uh, with the goal of eventually doing a half marathon. So I've only gotten up to 10 miles so far, but it's the half marathons on the horizon. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that. I, I used to run a lot on my own and then um, just, I don't know, as time has gone on, like running alone is really challenging. You know, it's boring. You get lonely. You're like, I, want, I need somebody to talk to to get me through the last, you know, half of however long you're running. So I definitely appreciate the the running with other folks. Tell, tell us a little bit, because I, I don't know that enough guys are familiar with with rucking and sort of the the benefit and um you know sort of what can be found there tell us your experience with with rucking i mean so um rucking is uh pretty much walking with a either a weighted backpack or some kind of, some guys don't even use a backpack uh you talk to like uh beta max for example and he for a while he he was picking up rucking and every pound he lost he's throwing another pound in his pack I think he got up to like 80 pounds or something before it started really killing his knees. Yeah. But um, there's a, there's a good art of manliness podcast uh, about it, but it's you for the time that you spend rucking versus running, it's something like 75% of the calories burned uh, that you would spend running. You would get out of rucking. Mm-hmm. Um, it's lower impact. Anybody can do it. Your heart rate doesn't get as high as when you run. And, uh, you know, if you get the right pack or whatever, the right guy, you can, you can have a conversation, you can add weight to it as you need to, or, or reduce, you just get a couple miles in. And it's, I, I think the pre-rucking is a good, um, if you're interested in pre-running, but you don't feel like you have the cardio yet, I think that's a good, uh, gateway drug to running, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And I know, I mean, a couple of weeks ago I w- was at a workout and, um, somebody wasn't, wasn't feeling up for, for running. They felt like, you know, their knee or something was bothering them. And so we just walked, you know, we didn't have any, you know, so even just that, um, I think like somehow it's just, I don't know, the, the mental benefit of just being out there. Like it's kind of like, I don't, you know, I don't know the running or wrecking or, but just being there shoulder to shoulder with, with another guy, I think is, is so great. So I love, I, I think, something that's been on my list. I don't know. I got to get approval from my family to go, but man, the grow ruck events, you hear roll bar talk about those and um, man, it would be cool to get a group of guys to go to one of those someday. Have you, ever, you ever been to one of those? No. It, and uh, roll bars had me sold on it. it it's just the, the timing hasn't worked out for me. I, I think it'd be really cool um, to go do. Yeah. It's uh, it seems like an amazing event. Yeah. Well, so tell us a little bit then about like other second F pieces. Cause I, I think we, I mean, we're we seem to be doing more and more in that space, but just, I mean, coffee, you know, I, I think um, just through being a site queue at Combine, buying you obviously participated in Q source, but where else do you see guys building those relationships? Well, it's kind of fun. Cause you, you know, naturally once you start in F3, you start seeing F3 stickers everywhere. Um, so you, you end up like you're at your kid's school, maybe you run into another parent that's, uh, an F3 person. It's, it's great to have like kind of that network around, mm-hmm. um, you know, we, uh, have done a couple like fire pit nights occasionally. Um, and that kind of turned into the, the trivia that we do out at, uh, uh, local at Village Point, uh, Doppler kind of spun it into that, which is awesome. It's kind of an evening event with the with the boys, oh. just killing trivia. Yeah, and I think undefeated forever. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah how 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 are those events normally? I feel like they allow kids to go to those too sometimes, right? Yeah, I think uh, kids can come. the The trivia is normally like I think it starts at seven o'clock. So depending on on the night, the kids might be able to stay up or not, but yeah. yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. I know Gator, you know, Gator's 
son Sharknado, who's you know, I suppose he he really behaves more like a you know fifty year old man, but um, <laughs> anyway, I've heard he goes there too sometimes. What um what about uh, just just sort of family as you think about Concentrica? What's your uh, family structure? How many kids you guys have? How long you guys been married? So uh, my wife and I have been married coming up on nine years. Um, nice. I have uh, my stepson is is fifteen and my daughter is six. She's going to turn seven at the end of this month. Um, so my my wife was actually married before to a guy. Uh, named Matt Hillbrandt, and he passed away. He had a, a heart thing, and they had a, a checkup surgery on his valve, and then everything looked fine, and then he was gone. So um, oh. so I he was an acquaintance of mine. Um, his best friend was one of my best friends growing up, and uh, my wife Ashley and I kind of started dating and got married, and... Um, so I've been in in Chris, my stepson's life since he was five. So, and uh, the good thing is their their side of the family is very supportive, and it's honestly like having three families, which is kind of mm. nice. Yeah, it makes Christmas and Thanksgiving kind of hectic, but it's uh, yeah. it's really good. Wow, how how has that been? I mean, as you've started F three. And, you know, just, I think, you know, reinvigorate male community leadership, right? How has that impacted your, your family or has it at all? Um, overall, it's been a very positive thing. Uh, I, I always say like the best days I have are the, the days that I started with F3 because you get, you get that camaraderie to start the day and it just, it sets you up for success the rest of the day. So, um, and, and then with my wife starting in FIA, there's a, you end up learning how to be more vulnerable with other people. Um, So you end up having better conversations. Um, We also go to bed a lot earlier than we used to. So um, yeah, overall it's been great. Uh, My son's been out to a few workouts and he's, uh, he's, he's a very driven kid. He's very motivated and, I don't know if that's F3 related or if I did any of that, but he's, uh, he's, his head's definitely in the right place. And I really like that. What is it? What did he think when he came out to a workout? So I brought him out to a Murph thinking, you think you're in shape <laughs> Come out to this thing. You're going to get smoked. You know, he comes out having not done anything for the previous three weeks, really and uh comes out and is with the the leaders of the group like probably next to you at red wings just you know pull-ups no issue push-ups no issue squats no issue comes back and he's like a little bit out of breath i'm like what'd you think that was rough right and he's like it was all right (laughs) get out of here (laughs) oh that's funny has he been consistently or just a couple times He's been a couple times, but he's uh, he's in high school sports, and yeah. they they have a pretty strict schedule. <laughs> yeah, well, bring bring him out for IPC in September and see what he thinks of that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> that's funny. Tell me, you know, as you think about um, the the Q source, then I mean, how has that uh, impacted just sort of relationships, or or even just maybe your the way you lead your family and at work? Uh, Q source has been very impactful um, for me. It, it's like a, it's like a weekly reminder of, I mean, it, it is the guardrails for, for leadership as far as I'm concerned, mm. you get the opinions of other people. And it kind of, I don't want to call it a sounding board because it's not really that it, it kind of, you throw an idea out there and you get corrected. So that's, mm. I think that's really important. Um, I actually have stolen a lot of the ideas from from Q Source, and I I put it in because I, I lead a, a team here, um, and uh, I have a Friday meeting, a Friday morning meeting. So nice. we have Q Source from six uh, fifteen till seven, and then my Friday meeting is at nine. So then I started adding in the Friday nugget to yeah. that meeting. So at the end of it we talk about a little bit about leadership at the end of it. So 
I take the topic from Q source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually apply it to our own meetings. And the reception's yeah. been varied, but overall it's been a positive thing for the group. Yeah, I have definitely stolen most of the stuff from QSource. I mean, you talk about like your, you know, vape, uh, the vision, articulation, persuasion, and, and exhortation, and then um, the leadership development process. I mean, I, I think, you know, that it just, it's a, you know, I don't know, like you said, it's guardrails of leadership. I, I love QSource, definitely a fan. What, I mean, have you had times, and I'm sure you have, but just, you know, where maybe conversation, you hear a guy say something and realize, oh, we've got something in common and that maybe you know, spawns into a, a friendship or anything in that space? Definitely. Um, well, like Kryptonite, for example, uh, we found out during a beatdown that, you know, we knew some of the same people. And then uh, a couple of weekend, a couple of weeks go by and we find out that our birthdays are the same. Oh, wow. That's and then awesome. um, same, like same age, are you the same age or just same days? He's, he's exactly one year older than me. So, okay. So we did a co-birthday queue and then a co-queue even a few months before that because of a communication issue. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But he's he's been great to to push me. Um also, you know, even if you there's some guys you wouldn't expect to have commonality with, um, that you end up connecting with uh pretty well. Like um like Frosty, for example, he's you know, older than I am. Um, but then we ended up hanging out and he's, he's been great to, great to be around and he's, he's got a pretty good outlook on things. He's got a different kind of perspective than I do. And, um, so him like Superfly, for example, is another one Doppler, uh, Scuba makes me laugh. And so does Oompa. Yeah. The thing I, I run into is you get so many connections with these guys. Uh, it's hard to, it's hard to keep up with all of them. Yeah. And then we keep getting new, more and more new people, which is fantastic. It, I mean, it's great for the growth and everything, but it it's difficult to to maintain like a deep connection with, with some of these guys besides, unless you're at the same sites regularly. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely identify with that, especially moving out West in the last you know year or so. It's like guys I used to work out with, you know, when we, when we had 20 sites, right. You worked out with the same guys at least every other week. And, and now you're like, man, I only see you at the shovel pass, at, you know, Futurama once a year or whatever, but yeah, it's tough. I, have you been able to form a, a shield lock or has that been a, a challenge? So uh, just this week, um, I got a text earlier and we're, we're going to get it going. Okay. So nice. we've kind of done some informal stuff in the past, not really calling it a thing, but like that, that's every other Sunday running crew that was kind of a, a shield block in a way we didn't didn't throw a label on it we didn't exchange rings which i think yeah no, <laughs> yeah, yeah i feel like i don't know who it was beta or somebody one time you know they referred to them as, as sister wives which i thought okay well whatever whatever works right yeah yeah any i mean i guess tell me your thoughts there how how do we sort of keep those connections or or maybe maybe we don't need to just because the way F3 is, we all kind of understand or what's your perspective on that? Well, I think it's, it's important. Um, well, I, I don't know if I have the best outlook on this, but I have like my set track of AOs that I hit pretty much every week and I'll veer off a little bit, but I always want to stay within I don't know, 10, 15 minutes of my house. And I, I'm pretty lucky and I'm pretty fortunate that I'm able to do that. But um, with that, uh, you end up seeing the same same faces pretty regularly, and I think that's that's how you bond. And then as you know, new sites get added, um, maybe your circle gets smaller, and you're staying within five to ten minutes. But uh, you're making relationships with the people that are close to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think the sectoring has helped with that. But then. You know, if you see somebody wearing an F3 shirt or um, you see a sticker on a car, there's that instant bond there. It's like a shared experience and oh. you can say the word Merkin and they they think of the right thing instead of the other thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah, I think the sectoring and it, um, as we expand, just, I, I think it's good to go see other sites too, just to see how they do it. 
Uh, I know Farva gets all over the all over the place. He's a Sarpy guy, but he was he's always posting out west with us too. Mm -hmm. So and it's great to see those guys. But I'm th I'm just thinking. I don't know the last time I saw Folsom at a beatdown. Yeah. And I know he's posting or U-Haul. I used to see U-Haul three or four times a week. Yeah. I should make a point to go east. Maybe this yeah. is the conversation that's going to make yeah. me do that. Well, it's tough, right? Because I think like, you know, F3 Nation would <laughs> would probably say, okay, well, go, you know, you're going to have a, a bigger impact on people in closer proximity, right? So then to me, that's like, okay, well, go to the locations close to where you live and that's sort of your community but then but then it's tough because we want to see all these people like you said we want to see we want to see you Paul, and we you know we want to see all all the guys we have worked out with over the years and i think um especially in f3 omaha you know we used to do the khakis challenge where it was try to get to every ao in a month which now is not possible right you can't actually do that um so yeah it, it's interesting i do think you're right though there's something about you know, picking those spots that you can post at consistently and then at least making it, making it, you know, an effort to be consistent, you, you know, more often than not, I struggle with all the different, you know, I'm always pulled. I feel like I want to go to the VQs and the shovel passes and, um, you know, so it can be tough. I mean, I, you know, to feel like you don't have that consistency. Um, but we, you know, I don't know, there's, I don't even know how many active packs we would consider us having, but, um, I, I totally agree with your comment about that. Just, just a common bond, right? You see somebody in the gloom and even if you don't know them, there's like just this mutual respect and understanding that, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. What about, um, you know, as you think about, you know, kind of Q source and I guess, you know, I don't know if the story, um, of of matt plays into this at all but like that third f piece the faith piece what's been your kind of experience or journey there and and maybe how has f3 helped or supported you in that well with uh with f3 i mean we pray almost every morning now mm -hmm. um that's not something i did before f3 oh. um we would go to uh i'm more intentional with with faith when when I'm engaged in it, uh, there was a lot of times, you know, we're, we're Catholic. We'd go to a church and I would walk in and my mind would be on something else the entire time I was there and walk out and not even have, <laughs> I mean, I was there physically, but not mentally. Yeah. So, um, my, uh, my word of the year is, is presence. Oh, nice. Uh, so that's kind of been my, as, as I, we talk about faith and, um, you know, I never donated blood before F3 and now I'm, I'm on that eight week cycle from the third F channel and we'll be donating blood tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we've done some of the volunteer things. I've gotten my, my son involved in that. So it's been, it's been really good. And I, I think just having that stuff and setting a good example is, I think that that spreads to the family and everybody around you too. Yeah, that's huge. I, I love that. I think, you know, the, the giving blood, some of these things that are maybe just, um, they don't seem like a, a big deal necessarily. Right. But, but like, honestly, giving blood working in healthcare, like there's a huge need for that. Right. So the more guys we can get to help in that space and it, and it does create another opportunity, right. You see guys there or we're, you know, seeing who has the fastest bleed time or, you know, like we kind of, we make it fun, you know, which is, is really cool just to be a part of that. What about, um, you know, as you think about, you know, maybe your, your story, is there anything that you feel like it, that you've maybe overcome or, you know, areas where other guys could kind of learn from your uh, experience, anything in that space? So um, there was, there's, there's been quite a bit. So I, I have gone, um, it's maybe a different kind of a challenge, I guess, but, uh, you know, in my, in my career, it's been, I, I took a leadership role about two years ago and then, um, you know, part of the F3 stuff and is kind of encouraged me to be better at that. So then naturally you're rewarded with more responsibility yeah, and more stress and, all that kind of stuff. And without, without F3, without getting that, I don't know what it is, whatever those chemicals are out of you in the morning, the stress piles up through the day. 
and mm -hmm. you end up snapping. And so it, it's helped me stay calm in a lot of ways. Um, I found that uh, maybe a year, a year and a half into F3, I kind of just stopped coming mm. for it, it. It wasn't an intentional thing. It was like I had to go out of town for one of my normal days. And then I kind of fell off the wagon a little bit and two weeks had passed and I hadn't gone to a beat down. So then I was like, okay, I'm going on Monday. I'm going to the octagon. And I went there and, um, I started talking, it was tater tot and slow pitch were there. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. And I just started kind of going to the excuses as to why, like I hadn't been out and they're like, good to see you back. they like, didn't want to hear they're like, well, you're here now. It yeah. was like, the past didn't matter. Nothing before this moment matters. You made the choice to be here. And that's that's the important one. And it wasn't even like, a, I was, I think I was seeking forgiveness or something for sure. not having posted. But they're like, it's there's nothing to forgive. What are we talking about? And yeah. it was just such like a, like a big brother kind of a moment from them. And it was just, it was so needed. And there's, I mean, there's been other instances like that yeah. where it's, you find yourself in a, in a spot and you're, or, or dread, um, I don't know, this is kind of career related again, but I had to, uh, I had to terminate an employee for mm -hmm. the first time, which is obviously not great for them. Also not great for the person doing it. Yeah. So I'm talking to cheap seats about that. And he's like, yeah, that's, that's tough. And he just listened and I saw him the week after and he just comes up, he goes, so you fire that guy yet? <laughs> and it was like, it just, I don't know. It, it caught me off guard, but it was, I don't know. It's just a, the place he was coming from was so good. And uh, he, I don't know, he, he gave me some good words of encouragement on how to do it and just kind of understand the, the footing I needed to be on. And I, I really appreciated that. Yeah, man, I, that that's so cool because, you know, first of all, to, if, if anybody, if you haven't had a chance to work out with Tater and Slow Pitch and, and hopefully you get to be in the same group with those guys because it just is, it's so goofy, just their interactions as brothers. I, I just can't help but laugh. But then, um, you know, I, I hope that everybody who's posted and maybe taken some time off would would know like that's, I think that's the mentality across all of F3, right? Is, is we don't really, I mean, we care that you haven't been out because we miss you, but like, we don't need an explanation, right? I mean, we know everybody's got stuff going on. Um, and when we get to see you, we're excited to see you, you know? And, and if there's something challenging that we can help you with, that's preventing you from coming out. Like we want to help with that, but um, yeah, I th that's a really cool example. I think we got a lot of guys, in that boat. I mean, you know, according to the roster, right. We have at least a thousand guys in that boat uh, across mm -hmm. Omaha that need to come back and not feel, you know, any sort of way about it. But um, man, you know, in the work thing, I guess I, I would, you know, do you feel like some of the Q source stuff applied there too, I guess, cause I, I struggle. I'm in the same exact boat as you, like for whatever reason, it's hard to um, there's some people, you know, need to need to move on, but it's really hard uh, to have those conversations. Yeah, it's it's just difficult. I mean, it's the last thing that we that I would want to that I want to do. Um, yeah. But you know, you give you give a certain amount of chances, and you find out that they'd probably be happier at a different place. Yeah. So it's almost a favor to them, um, even though it doesn't feel like it, that you help them find where they need to be. Yeah. One well, and how many stories have we heard where? Uh, you know, a big event like losing your job is sort of what causes you to realize, whoa, I need to make some change, you know, and then that sort of propels people into greatness, right? So sometimes, you know, it, it does end up being really the best, uh, best for both parties. But man, thanks for sharing that. I know that's um, not easy to always share. But, you know, I guess I want to also ask you about your leadership, you know, within F3. Um, and just sort of, you know, would love to hear if you remember your VQ, uh, and then, you know, tell us what it was like kind of taking over the the flag at uh, Combine and also would be, um, well, I, I've heard your story about Barbershop. Uh, so I want to hear that story of sort of how he became the, the site Q2. 
So uh, my my VQ was at the Oracle when the Oracle was at Aldrich. Okay. And um, I it was the seven o'clock Oracle, and I remember going to a seven o'clock Oracle, and there was like thirty people there. So I'm thinking like, okay, I got to set up a bunch of stations. I I just don't want to have too many people at a at a station at a pain station. Yeah. So I set it up and I go, okay, I'm going to have this many exercises. And I actually took my son and we did like a dry run of it to, to make sure it was going to be good. And, uh, I get there and there's seven people total for the, oh. for my VQ. I got four stations and, uh, we rotate and I'm looking across and, and, uh, stupidly of me, I said, okay, we're going to count out in fours. <laughs> so I'm, I'm there with, uh, another guy and I'm staring across the, the sharpest parking lot in Omaha yeah. and tater tots over there by himself, just kind of smile or not tater tots, excuse me. Uh, Toto was over there smiling at me, like just chilling, doing squats by himself. And yeah. we, t- <laughs> We did one laugh, and then somebody, I can't remember who it was, but they convinced me to audible so that we all did the whole thing as a group, and then it, it ended up turning out great. But yeah. um, it was just, and I didn't have enough exercises on there, so we ended up rinsing and repeating twice, I think, and it was it was definitely a learning experience for that. Yeah. But it, it was fine, and, you know, people are going to, they're going to work out as hard as they want to. Yeah. Uh, you can always make it more challenging on yourself for sure. And, but I didn't realize that at the time. Um, first taking over the, the combine, uh, flag. So LPC had the flag before me and, uh, Sparty had it before him and LPC sent me a text and he goes, what do you think about queuing a site? And I said, yeah, it sounds cool. And then, uh, two months go by and I say, were you serious about that? And he goes, yeah, you still in, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was so. That was the official. You were taking it over, right? <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's so that awesome. was uh, that was kind of how that worked out. And then we had to move the site in uh, around St. Patty's Day. Actually, on St. Patrick's Day was the day we moved the site from Kiwit to to Aldrich. That was kind of a different experience, and I uh, again learned that I didn't update the Twitter profile. And um, we had been there like maybe a month and then Diddy was signed up to Q. And, uh, you know, it's 5.15 and no Diddy. Uh Uh-oh. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe the alarm didn't go off. Yeah, Yeah, you never know. These things happen. So we just started doing a string of pearls workout and then, Diddy pulls up in his van and he's like, where are you? Where you guys are here the whole time. And <laughs> I say, yeah, we've been here since St. Patrick's day, <laughs> but I hadn't updated the address on the Twitter account. So he went to Kiwit, which was still mm-hmm. open at the time. Um, and then we finished the beat down with him and I, I felt terrible about it the whole time <laughs> after that. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, so we're still there. It sounds like we're gonna move back pretty soon. Yeah. The road's open from Dodge, and uh, I don't want to step on Barbershop's toes, but I think it's gonna be on his anniversary. Oh, cool! That'll be awesome. I, you know, it's funny. Like the the lessons we learn of just being flexible. You know, being able to pivot. You know, in the moment, and um, and also just leaning into the guys around you. Right? Somebody else recommends an audible and sure you know let's let's try that i've certainly had uh i've had a few cues where it's me and one other guy and so then you know don't really need all the cones that i set up or <laughs> yeah, that stuff but no that's um man you know I, i'm sure we have hundreds of stories like that throughout the packs but uh, no that's and moving a site we've had a few guys right I, I think icy hot moved paradise from paradise bakery over to wheat fields and you know, those first few months, I think are a little bit tricky because you, you don't know if somebody's going to 
you know, maybe somebody remembered it was at this location and they don't check online or, you know, there's so many ways that a guy can show up at the the wrong spot. So it's, um, yeah, that's, that's a tough one, but, um, thankfully you had the foresight to say, Hey, we got construction coming. Let's, you know, let's think of a better plan so guys can access it. Uh, you know, and, and, and that again was not my, <laughs> that was not my foresight. Oh, um, one of the other guys said, Hey, there's construction coming here. You should probably move the site. And I said, Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. And let's I looked do into it. It, I'm like, yep, that is, uh, that is the way I, I need. Sometimes I need a, a good idea to expand upon. Yeah, no, I love it. I I'm curious your thoughts on this too. Cause I, I, I don't know. I always felt like as a site queue, I mean, you're the consistent guy who's at that site every week. Right. And so then you do, you get to see new guys post and you maybe get to kind of come alongside them in their journey or their struggles, or you hear, you know, maybe the same prayer request every week or kind of stewarding people's relationships with F3, that sort of thing. Any, any experience in that space for you? I, uh, what's great is you get to see, you get to see somebody do that, like, like their, their first post at your site and get named. And then, you know, two months later, they're, they're having their VQ. Mm -hmm. And what I like is the similarity in that experience is you have, the, they do their first post and then they're trying to learn all the names of stuff. And then you say, what would you think about, uh, you know, what do you think about leading? You want to lead the, the workout? And they say, well, I don't know. And then I say, well, we're open on this day three weeks from now. Yeah. So do you want in? Yeah. And they're like, well, I don't know. I'm like, I'm just going to put your name down. It's kind of like <laughs> a, a forced, forced leadership thing. But it, they always, it seems like the next week you see them at that same site, they've come around and said, okay, I'm in. Yeah. So like Mrs. B is, uh, is one and he, he did a great job. And then also, uh, uh, flat stick, I think is going to be doing it pretty soon at the combine. Nice. Did, were you there when, uh, when Papa Smurf was named? I think you were right. I don't know. He, I might've been, he was the guy. black asleep earlier. I, I, sometimes I show up and I get home and I'm like, what did I just do? Well, <laughs> he, he was the guy. So I was queuing and I named him something else. And, the, and before we even prayed or did any announcements, he, he just said, we got to change my name guys. This is terrible. Like he spoke up right away. It was like, I don't like that name. Can we do <laughs> Papa Smurf? And I had, ne I've never had a guy ask to change his name, like in the moment. So I just was like, uh, you've got the balls to speak up right now, I guess let's <laughs> change it. You know, it's not officially on the roster yet. So, but he's bringing a ton of people out to the combine. I feel like that group is continuing to grow. Um, at that site. Well, so tell us about, um, about barbershop and sort of how he, uh, how you, I don't know if you selected him or how that, uh, sort of went down. Uh, so I think it was the, the CSOP last year. He, he ran one of the, one of the last, uh, parts of that gigantic, uh, beat down. Yep. And, uh, it sounded like, I mean, he had expressed interest in leadership and some guys had said, yeah, you're going to be getting a flag. And then he kept seeing flags get passed. And, uh, originally I, had, I had talked to Beaver about taking the flag oh, yeah. and, and then his job changed. Now he's the, he's like, I don't know if he's like the head of the entire Panama Canal project or it's something like, like he's pretty much making the Panama Canal work, Yeah, but he's having to go down there quite a bit. And, uh, barbershop came up to me and he said, uh, you're supposed to be getting a flag. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> this one. Yeah. And um, honestly, I, I couldn't have, uh, he's, he's like the perfect guy for that. Mm -hmm. um, he's always been, uh, I just told him the other day, I go, I wish you were like my co-pilot all the time. Cause he said, he was telling me, he goes, you know, if you, if you feel nauseous, you put some like ice in your hands, the nausea goes away. Oh, interesting. And I was like, I never would have thought of that. And he's um, between that and like my daughter came out to a 2.0 workout and she fell and got like a non-injury 
Like mm-hmm. he put out her hand and I was trying to console her and I was kind of losing my mind. He comes over I mean, he's got, I don't know, 40, 40 kids, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. He comes over and he talks, he's like five words to my daughter and she's totally calm and like already laughing. Nice. Like, how do you do that? He's just, he's magical. <laughs> yeah. He's got great calves too. And he's got great calves. Yes. And given slow pitch a run for its money there. Uh, yeah. Well, and you guys did something cool with the flag too, where you put um, sort of like a painted uh, little, little icon of of each site. Yeah. Cube. Uh, cool. Sparty started that there. It's, it's almost, it's on the backside of the combine flag and it's almost like a totem pole. So yeah. you look at the bottom uh, there's like a Spartan helmet and then LPC for leather personnel carrier. There's a, a boot. And then kill switch. There's like a Frankenstein switch, and then um, I put a barber pole on uh, for barber shop. So um, it was funny. Is at the at the flag pass, I was showing barber shop that, and he goes, "I'm gonna have to like really start planning this ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get somebody out here, and I'm gonna have to name him something like Circle. Yeah, <laughs> something he can draw. An easy easy paint. <laughs> oh, that's awesome." <laughs> What, um, you know, I'm curious to just through your, your leadership and maybe it's at work or, or through F3, but what sort of advice would you give, you know, a guy, maybe it's an F and G or a newer PAX member, or maybe it's another site queue, but just from your, your learnings, what would you share as a piece of wisdom? Um, I would say that you are not too busy or too anything to try something new or to, you have more capacity as a person than you think you do. Mm. Um, uh, I used to hear the saying, like, if you want something done, ask a busy person. That's that's because it's true. There's, you spend so much time um, on things that you don't, we're so focused on getting things done faster or more efficiently that I think we neglect at adding on or taking on new things. Mm. Um, and, and try something new. Like we, um, I'm doing 75 hard for the second time, which I, when I first heard of it, I'm like, I'm never doing that. That sounds yeah. stupid and hard. And then here I am in the second round of it, doing it again. Um, and when you, when you take risks like that or decide to do, do something, um, everyone in F3 will support you in it. Yeah. And if if you need encouragement, they they'll offer it up or um yeah, there's just I can't stress that enough. Like try it. You know, like Shia LaBeouf said, just do it. Just do it. Video. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> him him and Nike. No, I, I really appreciate that because I do think you know we're sometimes we're more apprehensive than we need to be, right? And um yeah, if anybody wants to try taking on the role of giving people access to the roster and queue schedule, I'm happy to give that up. Uh, anyway, um, no, I, I'm curious on the 75 hard. Are you doing the second phase now where that because I think after you do the first one, then he adds like a cold shower and a um, on mine. I'm not I'm not doing it, but on the app that I have, there's like a talk to a stranger random act of kindness like he adds tasks to it every time you get i don't know but but which i think that's a great thing to do and house party's doing it and he's he's awesome he's he's killing it um i took 75 hard and made it not as hard (laughs) in the original um scope of it you're supposed to do two 45 minute workouts four hours apart yeah um I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. going to do uh, I'm going to do a, a pre thing. That's 45. I'm going to get 90 minutes in, yeah. in a day. And that's otherwise uh, I feel like I'm taking time away from my family in the evenings um, by doing that. And I just, I don't know. I think the and maybe I, I should take my own advice and, and take it a step further for the phase one and do the cold showers. But um, yeah, it, it's working out good for me. And yeah. I, <laughs> I'm enjoying it. it. It's pretty hard. It's pretty hard on your body to to really try and and do two a day for for that long. Yeah, yeah. I think my initial takeaway from 75 hard was the honestly the water. Like I'm I'm you know like the water. I notice a huge difference there. And then the 
reading 10 pages a day because i feel like you know, i always would get intimidated by like oh i gotta sit down and read this book but if you if you just hammer out 10 pages a day you get through a book pretty quickly um so i, I don't know for me those were probably the two two bigger takeaways um but yeah okay well, well kudos to you man for just keeping with it i think it's nice to have like that sense of accomplishment too right you get to the end of that and you've you know you've achieved a goal which is great I'm curious if there's any anything else maybe um, that we haven't covered or haven't asked you about that you would want to share. Well, I will say one more thing about uh, the the second round of 75 hard is yeah. it was not my idea. My my wife is also doing her second 75 hard, and uh, I was not going to do it until the day of. So okay. yeah, <laughs> the day so, it's, so it's a marriage thing. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Yeah, that's awesome. Anything yeah. else on your on your mind that you would want to share with people listening? Um, I would say uh, just post, just get out, um, get around the excuses. Even if you can't post, if you have something going on early that morning, get out and pre-run or do a pre something. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, I gave myself that excuse uh, a lot of times of like, oh, I have to leave for. I have to leave for work at, you know, 645 this day. So I can't, I can't make it to the beat down or whatever. Or even if you can go and stay for part of the beat down and leave, it's yeah. still worth it. It's still, it's still meaningful to go get out. Yeah. yeah I've noticed more guys seem to be doing like pre-run and then they'll, then they have to go or, but I, and I think that's great. I mean, to your point, just getting out there is, is awesome. <laughs> What um, is you think about just where you're at currently? What, where do you need you know prayers or or encouragement from guys when we when we see in the gloom? What should we be encouraging you on? Um, I think for me, like right now, just getting through this 75 hard, and you know, I've had some I've had some struggles with uh, with work, and um, you know, the age gap in my kids that I have the 15 year old and the and the almost seven year old. So first off, I'm teaching my son how to drive. So keep keep me in your <laughs> prayers that yeah. uh, that we don't get into an accident. Um, and just uh, I guess uh, have have patience with me if if you send me a text or something and I don't get back. It's it's not that I'm ignoring you. It's just that we have four different schedules to manage, and oh. uh, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on, man. No, I, I, it's, yeah, maybe let us know when you're out there driving with your son and we can get off the road, right? That's always the, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, he veers yeah. to the right. So just stay. <laughs> he veers to the right. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Do you have one of those student driver, you know, stickers that you put on the car? No. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to wait till we get him his car and then we'll, I'll weld it on there for him. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking time just to share your story. We'll do a little uh, name rama Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Brandon Flaherty, 37, The Plague. The Plague. Ah! ah. Dad O'Brien, 39, Kill Switch. Kill Switch. And we make like a zzz, like electrical shock kind of sound. <laughs> yeah. We so can't do that or they'll say engage. Engage. Nice. I like that. Awesome, man. Well, have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. All right. Later.